Hi there everyone, this is a short video lesson from the academy for the students out there who need a last minute quick revision for the final exams. So this lesson will basically cover George Orwell's momentously popular fable Animal Farm, which is a mocking allegory of the Russian Revolution starting in 1917 leading up to the events of 1945. So before delving into the context, key characters and themes, we should first get to know the author so as to get a better understanding of his great work. Deeply an English intellectual and a political writer, George Orwell was born Eric Arthur Bligger in British Control, India, but he used his pen name for his literary writings, pen name of George Orwell. He used his writings with the basic aim of trying to change the world for the better, and he actually did that. Um, he deeply observed the 20th century socio-political circumstances around him, which included class stratification and revolutions turned disaster, which he quite explored in Animal Farm and in his another dystopian novel called 1984. So basically through his writings, he became a leading voice in the political and social issues that were left unvoiced in his era. While looking at the content of Orwell's work, I believe nothing would explain it complete and fully apart from his own words when he states that it is always a sense of injustice that triggers and sparks his writings through which he wants to expose laws and facts that would reach the ordinary mass audience as well. Since Orwell strongly hated the snobbish intellectuals and uh, his work therefore champions the opinions and outlook of the ordinary person and in doing so he became a defender of the lower oppressed working class. Since Orwell was against the exploitation of power in the form of totalitarianism in its every guise be it communist, fascist or capitalist, Orwell's Animal Farm and 1984, which is a dystopian novel, best explain the horrors of a totalitarian regime, which also explores the every possible weakness of man who, according to Orwell, is a feeble creature having the slogan of war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Now moving on to the basic introduction of Animal Farm, it was written during the Second World War as a mocking allegory of the Russian Revolution and communism's rise to power in that time. It is also considered to be an allegorical satire because it points out the faults and evils of Joseph Stalin's dictatorial rule in the communist Soviet Union. Soviet Union is basically Russia at that time. So the novel was completed in 1944 but it was refused to publish in the same year due to the wartime alliance between the Soviet Union and England so as to avoid uh, the online political upheaval it was published a year later. Since Animal Farm is an allegorical representation of the Russian Revolution, it is highly significant to get to know the context as well of those times for the historical and political context. So Russia in those times was divided into two halves, the bourgeoisie, the one half which controlled the country's wealth, literally without doing anything, and the other half which has to do the most work, which were the impoverished and oppressed peasants and the working class, uh, basically the proletariat. So the working class was quite angry at its monarch, Tsar Nicholas II at that time, for getting the unstable country into the World War I for the falling economy, shortage of food, and inefficient handling of country affairs. So they were quite edgy and they wanted the monarch's abdication. This old scenario gave rise to Russian Revolution, which starts with the overthrowing of the monarch, Tsar Nicholas II, and it completely ended the monarchy in Russia forever. When the Tsar was overthrown, Vladimir Lenin, a Russian intellectual revolutionary, seized power in the name of the Communist Party, which was based on the noble ideals of equality and freedom basically for the oppressed working class, the peasants which were not given the proper and equal rights in Tsar's regime and rule. So, uh, with the starting of this revolution, it eventually gave rise to a civil war in the country between the Bolsheviks, which were the communists, also known as Red Army, and the non-Bolsheviks, the White Army, uh, which were the other political and social fractions inside the country and are thus non-communists in trying to gain control of the newly formed Soviet Union, but it all ended up with Bolsheviks gaining control of the whole Soviet state. So after the few years of revolution and civil war, Vladimir Lenin, who was the architect of this revolution, died, which had Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky, the other two great revolutionaries who walked alongside Lenin in bringing about this revolution, fought for control and power of the newly formed Soviet Union. It was when the things started getting messy because Stalin used 
forced to consolidate his power, he gained the upper hand and um, he became the undisputed leader of the Union, beating up the more intellectual Trotsky. He had him banished, exiled and murdered, and under Stalin things became even more difficult than they had ever been under the Tsar. There was famine in the country, impoverished, impressed working class was not given their rights. Libertarian industrial campaigns were started, they were targeted murder trials, targeted killing, everything was just at the ruin. So the Russian Revolution in the years following 1924 under Stalin's regime lost all the noble goals and ideals on the basis of which it was once initiated. So this was how the country itself ended up becoming a brutal dictatorial regime from which it once wanted and hoped to free itself. Heading on to the summary of plot line, the novel setting is England, where Mr. John's manor farm is located. Mr. John treats his animals very cruelly and badly. Uh, one night, all the animals gather to hear Old Major, the oldest of the pigs, while he describes a dream he has about a world where all animals live free from the tyranny of their human masters. Though the Old Major dies soon after the meeting, but the animals being stirred up by his philosophy of animalism, plot a rebellion against Mr. Jones. Um, under the leadership of pigs, two powerful pigs, Snowball and Napoleon. The animals got success, but since uh, the rebellion got started under the leadership of pigs, so they now themselves uh, become the most powerful masters of the farm after Mr. Jones is ousted. They now gain the whole mastery. Although they begin with guidelines for equality, liberty, freedom, but the pigs eventually rule by fear, setting up a totalitarian existence. And it mostly and basically applies to Napoleon, for he gains an upper hand by his manipulative skills and um, once he got the taste of power, he got addicted to it. Since Animal Farm is an allegorical account, there are direct parallels between the historical figures and the novel characters themselves. So, uh, Mr. Jones represents Sir Nicholas II, Old Major, um, is a combination of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, Napoleon represents Joseph Stalin, Snowball represents Leon Trotsky. Neighboring farmers, Mr. Frederick Pilkington, basically refers to Germany's and Britain's role in the Russian Revolution, while the boxer, the cart horse, basically represents the proletariat, the working class. Animal Farm's success as a fable and allegory lies in the characters' direct parallels to the historical figures. Or Major represents a combination of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin um, in the same way, as he was the one whose vision of socialist utopia serves as inspiration for the rest of the animals to stir a rebellion. Um, just like Karl Marx's theory of communism and Vladimir Lenin's working on it stirs up the other leaders and revolutionaries to start and initiate a new movement in the form of Russian Revolution. Napoleon represents Soviet leader Joseph Stalin because he appears to be the formidable leader of Animal Farm after the rebellion uses military force to intimidate the others and consolidate his whole power, just like Stalin did to gain an upper hand and control all the power for himself. Snowball um, represents Leon Trotsky in a way because he is the one who challenges Napoleon for control of Animal Farm because he is more intellectual, passionate and eloquent. In the struggle of power between Napoleon and Snowball, just like Napoleon did defeat Snowball, the same happened in the history when Stalin tried to gain an upper hand and he did defeat Trotsky by had him exiled, banished and murdered. Boxer is that cart host whose incredible strength, dedication and loyalty play a key role in the early prosperity of Animal Farm and in this way he is a representative of the working class, the impoverished, oppressed working class, the proletariat who always works for the success and prosperity of the Soviet Union without asking anything in return and without asking questions. Napoleon is always right was his motto. Squealer represents Russian media because he's the one who spreads Napoleon's propaganda and justifies his every wild act and how pigs need to take control of all the resources and in this way spreads false statistics pointing out that how the farm is gaining success under their rule and regime. Besides being a fable and allegory, Animal Farm also appears a political satire because it is a bitter attack on Russian Revolution in particular, while on the other revolutions in general. Because when a movement which has been initiated on the basis of equality itself turned dictatorial and totalitarian, it surely wreaks havoc. So he himself states in purpose 
for writing Animal Farm that he basically attempts to fuse political purpose and artistic purpose into one whole and he artistically did amazingly um, great job. Through his greatest anti-totalitarian novel, Orwell attacks the idea of a perfectly dictatorial communist regime by painting a terrifying picture of a dystopian world. And through this, he does not attack Stalinism as its one instance of totalitarian regime, but basically he also criticizes its every form and guise, whether it's working and wreaking its horror in fascist Germany, in Spain, in capitalist America, in his native England, even, and also in the Soviet Union. One of the prevalent underlying themes in Animal Farm is exploitation, which is beautifully explored that how social stratification occurs when the power drunk holds absolute rule over an overworked and naive underclass. And in doing so, they exploit this class for their own personal gains and means. Moving on to the next theme of deception, the pigs who control the animal farm, basically Napoleon, constantly keep aligned to the other animals just to maintain their unquestionable rule and power over the animal farm. And it could be best explained through the way they modify the seven commandments just to suit their own main purposes. And so, with trickery and deceit, Napoleon justifies his every questionable act to the other animals. Since Animal Farm shows how totalitarian society can emerge after rebellion initiated on the basis of equality and freedom, corruption looms large as the basic theme throughout the whole novel. And so through this, Orwell is trying to show that how absolute power corrupts those who rule the country. The other highly significant theme is that of the use of language as a tool of manipulation and it is quite beautifully explored in Animal Farm that how crucially important is the power of language in molding and shaping the thinking and opinions of the mass audience. And in doing so, Orwell is warning us against the manipulative use of language and um, in the novel, Schooler has been shown as Napoleon's propagandist, as that character who deceitfully and eloquently tries to convey to the animals and tries to make them believe that whatever Napoleon is doing is doing for their own good. So in one way or another, all these themes are beautifully interconnected and linked together, whether the manipulative use of language, the corrupt masters and the deceit and deception, treachery they use to exploit the lower working class, in all this way, it has been very beautifully woven together into the fabric of this novel. Now moving on to the significant quotes from the novel. Four legs good, two legs bad. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. These are the modified version of the Seven Commandments. Then the creatures outside look from pig to man, from man to pig, and from pig to man again. But already it was impossible to say which was which. And these quotes quite contain deep meaning in themselves. I also try to chart out some of the significant questions that gives an insight into how the possible questions could come up. Please feel free to mention any important work of literature you want to have a lesson on. So that's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys have found it useful and informative. Thank you for listening.